What's up everybody, Rabbit Hedgehog here, once again in Oklahoma City, and now we're doing the Springfield Dark Horse model, which is the solo variant of the Springfield. Also, does not have the windshield stock with it, and it has the Elite type fender, which is a little bit more open, doesn't have the flowy one like the Vintage. So, taking a little bit of things and changed them around, definitely all blacked out here. All LED back in there, and of course the one-touch saddlebag pop open. This is a 19 model. Beautiful looking machine, giant freight train headlight on the front of that. Blacked out headdress, of course the big floorboards. No heel toe once again. Now this one does have remote locking saddlebags. Of course, it's got the standard on button there. Of course, it does have all the information there. You got your trip one, trip two, tachometer, voltage, air temperature, average miles per gallon, range of fuel, regular odometer. Of course, you have your gear indication. You have your fuel gauge clock and you have your side stand warning you have your bright your chassis warning left right tpms system neutral and abs so that's actually really cool big analog fuel gauge up there starter button over here on the side just push all the way down on that of course cruise control press in you'll get the indication there when you set it it'll have the little arrow one left right turn signal self canceling after time flash pass push down Pass there, and of course, all your information on the back side there. Alrighty, and then fog lamps up front. I'll go ahead and start those off. Alrighty. Alrighty, now that we're up to riding here, sorry about all the crazy stuff happening in downtown Oklahoma City today. <laughs> Fun stuff happening, so there's a bit of traffic, a bit of things to cut through there. Now we're through that. Now we can cruise a little bit. Now the nice thing about the Springfield is it doesn't have the big fairing, so it is very open air and you can see all the way around you. I mean, you've got quite a bit of visibility here. Mirrors are out, very nice as well. Very good visibility out of them. This bike's very smooth, so they're very smooth. There's no rattling going through them. Big handlebars coming back at you, low line, so it keeps your arms straight down to your elbow and straight out to the fist in the wind. Seating position is a little bit less uh, stretched out as the Roadmaster is. Not much, a little bit. So your knee does come up a little bit more. You can see I'm actually up above the tank slightly with my knee and then going back down to the floorboard, whereas on the Roadmaster, I'm dead even with it. So not quite as big as the Roadmaster, but still a nice comfy position. You can see that this might bother some people on the air cleaner. Doesn't bother me. I don't really realize it's there. When I first rode Indians, I realized they were there, but now that I've gotten used to all of these things, it's not much of an issue anymore. But some people might find that a little interesting at first. Now, as you can see, this big girl turns like a dream. And of course, this is powered by the venerable Thunderstroke 111. And still, that same monoshock rear end the Andean has come to be known for on their big touring bikes. <laughs> Alrighty. So this is cable operated clutch once more. Cable operation, very light on the touch still. Way on the acceleration and she's away. Well, halfway through the travel, I should say. <laughs> now, here we go back into some of these tighter turns again. Got to be ready for the floorboard to scrape. Got pretty close, but dodged the hole and pulled out of that. But handles really well for such a big bike. 
Roddy already up in sixth gear. And there we go. So this bike is going to be squarely pointed at Harley Davidson's Road King Special. Now, I have not done the Road King Special on video. I only got to ride those when working at the Harley dealership. And I will say that I love the Road King. The Road King is a great machine. The windshield and everything and the way the handlebars are on the Road King itself, they come back more towards you like this bike. Whereas on the Road King Special, they are canted a little bit differently and the way you just sit a little bit different. You have a diff slightly different seating. You have a slightly different handlebar and it makes that bike meh to me and I don't know why. I love the Road King. It's a great machine with the M8. Great machine all around. Rides very comfortably but the Road King Special I'm just like meh on. I, I just part of it's because they took a lot a lot away of it and then they changed it up a little bit to where I just didn't quite like it. So this bike here though it maintains that low handlebar. It maintains that coming back at you. So it maintains that comfortable riding position And it just, it's just a great riding little machine here. Of course, you have great visibility off the front of it. This thing has a huge, you know, sight right there. Kind of, that's what my joke is on that, that top there. It's just pointed, that's where the bike's gonna go. <laughs> but it rides so, so well. I mean, it's got a very smooth engine. The 111 is a very, very good engine for touring. It's not like overly powerful. It's not something that's gonna tear you apart or anything like that, but it is a great cruising motor. You were riding around in traffic like this today doesn't bother me at all. I feel like I have a good command of the road. I feel like I'm very visible because of how big this machine really is. but I also feel like I can get away from the traffic in case something happens. <laughs> Let's switch this over to Taco there. As you can see, we're at 92 degrees. Of course, we just took off, so we're not quite warmed up yet. All right. Oop, overshot. <laughs> That's why I don't like dashboard mounts. <laughs> that will be one thing I always complain about, dashboard, trying to keep your eye on the road and trying to switch your control here. Ah shot again there we go all right look at this old girl highway speed now we're in sixth gear so we're rolling in top now right now we are at 70 miles an hour we'll get there and we'll lock in we'll get get rid of this little car here just follow the ones doing it there we go all right, so 70 miles an hour, 2,650, 2,700 RPM, somewhere in there. So you're not taxing the engine at all. Now on this concrete road where you fill all the joints, bike is comfy, gliding right over them. Of course, the Springfield I rode in the past did the same thing. I was very impressed with that. The chassis engineers for Indian do a very good job, an impeccable job at these motorcycles. For them to be so big, but so they're just so balanced and so well sprung, you gotta give them credit. The Polaris knew what they were doing when they hired these engineers. And like I said, we are dealing with much higher winds today. This bike doesn't feel moved at all. Of course, that time I was riding with the wind, I had it at my back. We'll switch around and we'll get make sure it's to the front. Engine braking, as always, fantastic. All right, 
right, so if you're a city cruiser and you're looking to take this thing around town and you got a 45 mile an hour top speed limit, it'll be looking at around 1,650 RPM, 1,700 at 45 miles an hour, sixth gear. Bike still has a little bit decent pull. I do recommend once again dropping the gear for this one at this range because you're not quite in the power band of the 111, but it still it, it makes a pretty nice noise for a moment. Then it gets going. <laughs> kind of makes that burble noise, but that's because it's a smidge bogged, which is not a good thing sometimes. <laughs> So even with the side winds I've got right now, not really being blown around that much. Once again, bike is extremely stable. Yeah, this bike is so well balanced. I mean, right now I'm coming to a stop. Now I'll put my foot down. I mean, you can sit there and if you wanted to, you could bounce it out a little longer. You sit there and if you're wanting to play with the wheel a little bit, you can keep this thing balanced for a while. Such a well-balanced machine. Wells, it's, it just wears the weight very well. And the center of gravity on this bike is nice and low, so it keeps much of that weight down there. So when the rider's added to it, it just balances it versus makes it even more top heavy. It makes for a good stable riding platform. I mean, once again, like the other touring bikes of the line this bike is very flickable now i will say this this is kind of funny to me i think the roadmaster probably because the rake and the way it is has a little bit faster steering than the springfield now this bike is that long low you know that long low cruiser look but the the roadmaster big dresser but this one here it does steer a little bit more lazy because the rake is a little bit different on it a little bit different combination always changes a little bit off and that's kind of a funny thing to note this bike is definitely lighter definitely you know, definitely not as big but definitely well balanced but definitely slower steering <laughs> that's not a big issue though it still steers really well for a big girl like I said, the brakes are great on this bike. They work bite perfectly whenever you go onto it, both front and back. Like I said, power is not tremendous, but it is great cruising power. Now, if you're in fifth gear, you're running around 1,950 to 2,000 RPM at 45 miles an hour. That puts you in a nice power band this bike will pull right away like I said six gears more of that cruising let's get some gas mileage kind of thing you can see now that it definitely pulls feeling on the engine super good too I mean this is ride by wire as you can see right with me <laughs> doesn't hesitate Like I said, the suspension on these bikes are so good. Going through these terrible roads that Oklahoma has, it just soaks them right up. Seat's comfortable too. So far, still not have the heat yet. Still haven't got there. <laughs> doing this all engine braking right until this then so engine braking is very good and engine braking actually helps you save fuel mileage too because whenever you're braking and you're still on it bike is still getting fuel whenever you're compression braking the systems automatically shut down the fueling so therefore you're just backing off and you're not actually squirting gas into it so there's a top tip right there engine braking is not a bad thing it actually helps in many ways Help save your brakes, help save your fuel mileage. It's just an overall good practice if you're getting into the intermediate biking. Alrighty, pump. Even over that big hump, didn't nearly feel a thing. <laughs> Alrighty.
get her back up here on the interstate. <laughs> she definitely has tremendous pulling power to get on the interstate. <laughs> Now we're going straight into that wind. And this bike doesn't have the windshield that the other Springfield does. Now your seating position does aid in how you feel the wind and what it does to you. So right now I definitely feel the wind swirling. I feel it hitting me. But because I'm in this posture already, it's not really bothering me at all. Good streamlined helmet helps keep things on your head. Not blowing around and all that fun things. Just good riding right now. So we'll go ahead and engage the cruise control. Like I said, I'm not even looking at it. Don't need to. It's real simple to operate. There we go. Oh. Try to be respectful to your people doing road work and all you get is people running you over. It's just not a fun day. All right. the turbulence and side blast and everything of that semi it didn't really move the spike at all if he cuts in front of me we'll see what the trailer does when it's putting out that wind that turbulence but so far we're good here like I said we're going over these horribly broken roads all this construction we have all the way around Oklahoma City no matter where you go everything's broken but this bike doesn't care. back up to 60 miles an hour. You definitely feel that wind hitting you. <laughs> so you'll see a little bit of turbulence on the front of my helmet due to the camera. It catches a little bit of wind and of course we're starting to get that side draft off of that semi right now. And it really, like I said, Despite not having that windshield or anything, it still rods very well. I would say that if you get the windshield, it'll help, but it's not a necessity. Especially today, we're what? Let's see if I find that air temperature again. 92 degrees. <laughs> so when we're this warm, it's not a, it's not a bad thing. Have a mess jacket and good wind flow. And I mean, the thing is, you can purchase the quick release windscreen. You can see it has the docks. It's very similar to the Road King Special in that uh, regard that it already has the hardware pre existing. All you got to do is buy the shield to put it on there, and it will dock on there. And like I said, if they would just put a heel toe shifter on this, I'd be happy. I'm one for heel toes when it comes to big touring bikes like this, especially with floorboards. It's just much easier to shift, in my opinion. I do like how it has the big brake pedal too. But as you can see, it just rides so comfortable. And I mean, you can see that there's not really much wind blast terrorizing me or anything. Not really moving. This thing just has such a commanding presence on the road, such a stable presence. Such a well-balanced chassis that 
even massive winds and side blasts and semis and everything going by, it doesn't really bother you at all. And like I said, just it's easy going, road going nature too is fantastic. As you can see, I've gone completely quiet because I'm just enjoying the ride. Now, everybody else doesn't want me to enjoy the ride, I guess. <laughs> uh, peoples, peoples. Can't we all just cruise and get along? <laughs> Now we've moved in that more open air where there's barely anything blocking and we're starting to change direction so I'll have the wind coming directly from my left in a moment. But even feeling the wind blast coming from this area, you can you know it's there, but it, it just doesn't move you. I mean it moves it moves my body a little bit, but the bike stays so stable under me. And when you're going long distances, the biggest thing that you fight is fatigue from being beaten around by wind and other things it causes you to have to constantly control the bike and this bike being so stable yeah your body's going to be a little bit beat up but other than that your mind and everything is going to work still because you don't have to worry about constantly fighting the controls and figuring out a direction to lean into and all that on the wind it just sits there it's kind of like on rails for dang sure And even in traffic, it's super easy to get around on because you can see everything. <laughs> But this is definitely a mileage eater, and if you want to make it an even bigger mileage eater, stick the windshield on it. It'll help you out. This bike, of course, is equipped with ABS and all the fun stuff. Braking package on this bike is very good, so you don't have to worry about coming to a stop whenever you hit the brakes. It's going to bring you down, bring you down nicely. As you can see, just riding around even in this traffic laden city, it's an easy to get along with bike. So if you're looking, if you got one of those longer commutes, you're looking for a good bagger. So that way you don't have to carry a backpack with you all day and all that, and you want to replace the car, get the gas mileage, it's a great place to be. Ample size saddlebags can carry some decent stuff. Very easy to ride, very easy to get in and out of traffic with, has good power to pull away at the stoplights, good power to maintain highway speed if you got those longer distances to go. Good stop and go power, everything is great for this kind of bike and plus like I said if you want to make it a touring bike all the way around the country, throw a windshield on it, that's all you got to do. Got a passenger, yeah you'll need to get your, your passenger seats and everything but this solo seat, nice plush comfortable, so if you're just riding by yourself. It is a great, comfortable place to be. So at any rate, I want to thank Indian of Oklahoma City again 
for letting me take out the Indian Springfield. Like I said, uh, it's been a bit since I've rode the Roadmaster Springfield combination since they first came out, to be honest. And uh, of course, this is just a new iteration of the uh, Springfield with the Dark Horse model. And this one, of course, has a little bit different suspension setups, different setup than the uh, original Springfield I rode. But it is a great riding machine still. Even without the windshield, it rides perfectly. I like the looks of this one because it opens up that wheel. Not big on the 1940s flared fenders. I do like the chopped up fenders a little bit better. Uh, that's just my opinion, my, my way I like looks. But this is a great, great riding machine. Yeah, a little bit on the expensive side, but it rides very good. It's gonna last you a good long time too. And, Overall, man, if you're looking, like I said, to replace that car, you're going to save on gas mileage. That's for dang sure. So at any rate, this is the Rabbit Hedgehog. If you have any more questions about the Indian Springfield Dark Horse, let me know. And once again, thank you to Indian of Oklahoma City at 7 Northeast 10th Street in Oklahoma City. Great place to go to if you're looking for a bike. Great people to work with. At any rate, keep that shiny side up, folks. Have a good one. We'll catch you on that next review.